morning, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Fishing is Therapy. And I'm excited today, man. I did a few things. I know you guys saw the title of the video. That's why you clicked on it. And uh, so I'm out here, man, with both of my kayaks. I got my Lifetime right here that you guys are used to seeing. And I got the new Pelican Catch Mode 110 kayak in the granite color. I like the gray. Um, and I just want to get into it and let you guys know why did I upgrade, right? Uh, I'm going to do a comparison side by side. What are the things I was looking for? Uh, this kayak retails right now at $799, $800. Shipping was an extra $100. I ended up getting my $100 shipping back because there was a few logistical things, but you can just pick it up if you want to from your local warehouse. But the Pelican Catch Mode, I ordered it directly from pelicansports.com. And I love the deal, man. It's the, uh, I think right now it's the best kayak you can buy for your money um, that doesn't break the bank. You're not going to go over $1,000. But I bought this kayak, this Lifetime Tamarack 100 kayak for uh, $300 three years ago. Um, and there's a few things that's been plaguing me that I want to upgrade. Uh, I wanted to upgrade and I went up and added an extra $500 to that. I'm going to still keep this kayak right here. I love it. Um, but there's a few things if you're going to have a long day of fishing that you're going to have to um, sacrifice, especially for me. I'm six foot two and the leg room on this kayak just didn't work out. So. Without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump into why I upgrade it, why I think it'll probably be best for you to upgrade if you have the same issues that I'm having or just to get a nice, nice budget kayak, okay? And I love the orange and gray and black, so <laughs> without further ado, let's jump right in, guys. All right, guys, so let's jump right in. I'm in the kayak, lifetime. Um, as you guys probably saw for a few videos, I do a lot of live bait fishing, right? So this is my number one thing, you know, my, my bait keeper here. And the thing that I, that's always plagued me about this kayak um, over the years, right, um, has been this lid right here, this hatch is rounded off. So when I'm setting my bait tank right here to get bait out, right, it's tilting this side, it's tilting this side, it's constantly rocking, right? It cannot stay here. And that's, it's just wobbly and all the water, a lot of water spills out of the bait tank onto the kayak. Okay. This lid right here, like you guys know, if you have a lifetime tamarack, is just held down by the bungee. So it's not waterproof. So as this bucket is right here, all this water is spilling down in here. As I'm changing the water out, spilling down in here. Waves is coming over, especially when I'm at Yona Dam, spilling over into here. And I'm tall, man, so when I'm sitting back, look, I'm like this, and my feet are like narrow, and I'm holding the bucket, and this is digging into the inside of my knees. I need a little more width. And if you guys know about kayak safety, you never want to tip over beyond your shoulder. Wherever your shoulder is, you never want to lean past your shoulder width, okay? And this kayak is narrow. I think this kayak is about 32, 33 inches wide. The catch mode is 30 five inches wide, 35 or 36 inches wide, okay? And that extra width changes everything for me. And it's a lot stabler kayak. I can actually stand up in this kayak. So I want it, for me, a flat platform right here. Even if I set it right here on this little kind of like gunwale thing. This is where I used to have my ammo can where I had a fish finder. If I set it right here, look, I can't even keep it even in the video to try to keep it straight. It's just, it's annoying. And these little foot pegs right here, man, they wear on your bottom of your foot at the end of the day. Like I said, I dealt with it for three years, but when you're thinking about how can I make my day on the water more, you know, pleasurable, you know, uh, more comfortable, you have to think of these little factors. And for me, that was number one for me, the bait tank, a flat deck, and the water sloshing in here. Okay. And there's another one of these in the back. So imagine how much water at the end of the day, I would tilt this kayak up, and about a quarter of the kayak is full of water. No good, you know, so, um, and now, if we move over into this kayak here, check it out. Uh, now I'm over in this kayak, right? Sorry if you guys can't see as well, I'm trying to do my best, I am tall. Um, but look, now look at that. It just lays and sits right there. I can open my legs wide if I wanted to, right? Look how much space. I mean, come on guys. I mean, what do you want? Look at the, the foot pegs. And I could just hang out right there. I can sit up here 
on it, I'm gonna add a few mods. You know I'm gonna get the mods. But look, you sit on the seat and fish like this. On that seat right there, it's very comfortable. And I can just get my bait out, cast out, and everything like that. So let's look at a few other features that the catch mode versus this kayak has. Besides that is one of my number one important features, okay? All right, another thing that I, you know, you guys, this has been working out really, really well, but like I said, it's a temporary thing. This is the stadium seat, all right? Um, what I normally do is hook these on the back of the seat right here, and I would have my crate right here. Even this, look at this lid, how rounded it is. It's not even waterproof. It moves around, and when I put my crate on there, it's sliding back and forth, and it's getting water in there, okay? I wanted to upgrade that, but this chair, comfortable chair for the lifetime tamarack, right? stadium seat. You guys see that on my uh, on this particular kayaks layout. You can order that if you want. It makes it well. But now look, look at the difference here. You have the option of sitting here on a soft cushion. You got cutouts for your pliers, for your hooks, whatever you need on both sides. Look at that. It's even storage there. Okay. You can store things in there, let the bungees, probably can add a few more bungees if you want and really close that up. But you can put your plain old tackle box in there and look at the seat, okay? This seat is called the Ergo Boost seat. And you got pockets right here. See, normally, look, I would have to just do that. Now, I can actually slide them down in here, okay? And I actually have a pocket back here. And I have a brush gripper because I normally tie off to the wall and things, right? But look at this. I can now store my brush gripper behind the seat, take off my carabiner clip right there, and then put this in the car. Take it out, set it down. I mean, that's just night and day. Look at the difference in seating quality. Look, nothing back here for my back. I buckle into that at the end of the day. Look at this, back support, hard bar. I mean, just comfortable. So I did a lot of research, guys. I like the color difference too. I like the orange and black. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a theme I really like. I tried that on this kayak. Um, so you got your scupper plugs, right? The water comes through my golf balls right there. Those are foam golf balls. I like over here, the scupper plugs are really deep. And it has that channel right there where it doesn't let the water fill up and come over the deck. Look, I can stand here. You have a standing platform. Where would you stand here? My feet are, are wide enough to where it's barely, I mean, I'm kind of on the edge right here. I could never stand up in this kayak. It's very tippy if you stand up, okay? Like I said, great for $300. You get the best you have. This is the best kayak for $300 in my opinion, okay? Well, look at that. Look at the storage back there. Remember, I'm setting the crate on there. But look at this one. <laughs> I could put an entire cooler right here. I could sit down back. I could put someone else back there. You know, the tracking on this kayak, since it's narrow, you see that point to it? It's very, it's very, it tracks very well. This kayak, from what I understand, I haven't taken it out on the water yet, it tracks very well. And the reason why is the skeg. You can just drop that over like that into the water. And that offers the keel because this kayak is so stable because it has like the pontoon type of build in the back and this one has it where it cuts through the water a little bit easier right but that different lip right there makes it more tippy when you get toward the edges but it cuts through the water when you got a skeg you don't have to worry about that and you still have the stability so you don't sacrifice you upgrade okay so you need a lot more space that's number one for me i'm tall Look at my foot distance here. I have it all the way pushed to the back, okay? And I can put my cooler here. I can put a cooler here. I can put my bait bucket here. And I can put anything I want here. And if you want, you can just take out these bungees, which I really like. You have the paddle grip option where you can put your paddle. Put your paddle under here. You know, just quickly if you need to. Or you could just remove this entire mesh right here and put cooler right here, bait tank, whatever you need to do, all right? It comes with the, the tracks. And I have a, a Railblazer star mount right here. This is a mini port star mount. 
and I have that one. And what I'm going to do is put my um, camera here so I can have this camera view of me, right? And then I'm on the other side. I'm going to put another one of these here, and then this will be my rod holder. But look at that rod holder. Look at that one and that one. Look at this one. It only has two. They worked great for the time being. But now you have three. And what I find myself doing a lot, like most fishermen, when you, when you net a fish, you could just toss the rod right in here really quick and tie up your line or take the fish off the hook. And then you can put the rod in the back if you want. So I really like that feature. I love the cup holder. Look at that. Let me go grab a water bottle real quick. Show you why I like it. Right here, when I'm drinking my water, I just put it right under my leg. This cup holder, come on now. Come on, guys. Really? Like, it's not even. I tried to make a cup holder. You guys saw that in a previous video. <laughs> and I tried to, and it just would not stay still because of the angle and how rounded off the edges are. It just didn't work out. So I just normally, water bottles end up like that. And that's frustrating, aggravating. On this one, Look at that. <laughs> Genius. You could put, I mean, a koozie, you could put big cups in here, your beer, whatever you need on both sides. Simple bungee design. I mean, come on, look at that. Look at the storage here under the seat. You can slide a plain old tackle box under there. They have the sides right here. This is a feature I really liked. Besides your, you have bungees on both sides where you can put rods. So you see this, you can lay a rod in that track all the way down here. And this is a rod tip saver. But look right here, when you set your rods down, I mean your, uh, sorry, your, your tackle box down, your plain old tackle boxes, they slide underneath on other kayaks, right? Not on this kayak, they made this, and this is a simple, the details matter, guys. So when you set it down in here, it sits flush on both sides. Very important. So you got all this storage here on this kayak. It comes with scupper plugs. Look at that. It comes with plugs. And they fit well in their foam. Here, it didn't come with them. I had to make my own. They're still in the pack. Skeg, storage. I mean, you know guys, I'm gonna mod this thing out. Look how sturdy the handle is. It's riveted. I never had a problem with rivets because the rivets I use on this kayak, you know, I used it for the anchor trolley. So people talk about the rivets on this, dude, these rivets are strong. I lift this kayak and I put it on top of this SUV right there. Okay, so come on, <laughs> it's fine. All right, I brought it straight from the warehouse just like that on top of the, on top of the vehicle. So. You can put a cooler, just look at the storage difference, okay? See I have space for the ruler, the boat ruler, right there to measure my fish. I think I'm gonna be able to line that and put it right here, along there. It may not be that long, we'll see how I work around that. Um, but guys, there's gonna be so many mods that's gonna take place right now. So, <laughs> I'm excited. I'm gonna just show you just a few mods really quick. The mods I'm going to use right now is, I've heard a lot of things about the seat slipping. So look, three quarter inch rubber leg tips from Ace Hardware, three quarter inch. Okay, about what, four dollars. I'm going to put that on there so it doesn't slip because I see the play already. Let me get that done. Okay, so there's a lot of footage coming up. I'm not... This is one of my major ones I'm going to do. I'm not going to play around. We got that gator patch. Okay? The keel guard. Why do I say that? Let me see if I can flip this thing over and you'll understand why. I'm not going to wait and scratch up this kayak like I did this one. Look at that. Look at all that kayak rash. I mean, I got a deep hole in the kayak right there. I didn't even notice that. Look at that. Look at the deep, the deep cut and divot in there. So I'm pretty sure I'm getting some little bit of water in through there. It doesn't look like it's open. It doesn't look like it's open, but 
But you see all that kayak rash, guys? I mean, I dragged this kayak through the mud, through everywhere. I mean, for three years. But look, this is a testament to how strong a lifetime tamara kayak is. I mean, look at all the scars. Okay? So I can see where I mainly drag it. There. Right? So I'm not going to play around. We're going to have that installed. Stay tuned to that video. We're going to add a boat ruler on there. That's from Academy Sports. Simple. Same one I have on this kayak. And then we're going to, one thing I noticed, I'm going to get some uh, pad eyes, nylon pad, pad eyes. Sorry, I'm not going to get them. I'm going to add this on. So I'm going to modify something really quick. This is what I noticed. So when um, this is on the kayak right here, there's nothing to hold it. And I noticed on the Pelican 110 high drive, the one that has like the pedals to it. So it doesn't have anything to hold the skeg. So when I turn this thing over on this, you know, face down, this is just gonna fall like that. I want something to be able to hold that. So I think I'm gonna add pad eyes on either side and add just a simple bungee, tie it over one pad eye and then put it over the other and it'll hold it down kind of like that. So guys, stay tuned. I'm got, you know, I got a world of mods to do. You know how I do it here. All right guys, so hey, I'm excited about the kayaks, man. We got some really good things ahead of us. So let's get ready to mod this bad boy, okay? <laughs> so I'm excited to get started. I'm gonna add a few. These are simple mods, but of course you know how it goes, guys. You start off saying I'm gonna just add a few things and then you evolve it. But thank you for staying tuned to another episode of Fishing This Therapy. I'm excited. Let's go ahead and get started on modifying it. Stay tuned and look forward to the next episode. I'm gonna roll them out and this is my kayak series, okay? From the Lifetime Tamarack to the Pelican Catch Mode 110. Coming soon.